imagine being able to fill up your gas tank using a fuel that is generated from carbon dioxide, the very greenhouse gas that is created when you drive your car in the first place. Thanks to the research that's being done here at the University of Toronto, we may be fueling our cars on methanol. Methanol that is generated using a system that makes this fuel completely carbon neutral. According to the Carbon Dioxide Information Analysis Centre, over 33.5 billion tonnes of CO2 were emitted from fossil fuel combustion in cement manufacturing in 2010. Biological sequestration, or carbon fixing, that occurs naturally is not sufficient to keep CO2 levels in balance, and this excess is contributing to global warming. Currently, one method of reducing CO2 emissions is by capturing and storing it, a process that University of Toronto professor Dr. Douglas Stephan contends comes with a myriad of issues. Some processes would advocate storing that carbon dioxide in the ground, for example, or storing at the bottom of the sea. There are issues with some of these processes. Uh, some of them are quite energy intensive. Some of them are uh, environmentally, have environmental questions associated with them. Um, another approach is to take CO2 out of, the ap out of the atmosphere and try to use it in some fashion and that's really what our uh, interest is, is to try to use the CO2 for uh, fuel production. Converting CO2 into methanol requires hydrogen, which scientists are now able to generate using energy from the sun. But you also need a chemical reagent. Usually these are precious metals that are rare, expensive, and can be toxic to the environment. But the catalysts that are being used here in Dr. Stefan's research, called frustrated Lewis pairs, are typically derived from plentiful, non-toxic elements such as boron and nitrogen. The Lewis pairs that we're talking about are generally, they're, they're molecular analogs of acids and bases. And normally when you combine an acid and base together, they quench. What we found was a way to combine the two with, and make them not react. Okay? So we make, them, we make these molecules so that they cannot react with each other. And that means that they're available to react with other things like hydrogen, like CO2. And that's, so it's kind of a designed um, new reactivity that we've come up with. And, and it turns out that when you, when you combine these things, they react with all kinds of molecules. And that's really been the really exciting part about it is that, you know, seeing all these broad applications. Dr. Stefan is focused on applying the science to methanol production because he says it makes sense economically and environmentally. The infrastructure is already in place that can handle methanol, and because both CO2 and hydrogen are renewable, generating this fuel source would be carbon neutral. The last component in the equation is to find the right catalyst to facilitate the conversion. What we've been able to do at this point is, is we, we can certainly capture CO2, for example. We can, we can even transform it to methanol, um, but it's in a what's called a stoichiometric reaction. In other words, we take one molecule of CO2, we get one molecule of, of uh, methanol, but then the reaction, the, then, then our, our frustrated Lewis pair is spent. It's over. Okay? So clearly that's what, what you really want is a situation where the frustrated Lewis pair can generate methanol, but then do it again and again and again and again and again so that you, so it's a catalytic process. In other words, all, it's just there to take the CO2, convert it to methanol, and, and, and facilitate that process. Then you don't need very much frustrated Lewis pair, and you can use lots of CO2 and hydrogen and you'd get lots of product. Currently, Dr. Stefan is working with Professor Dr. Eugenia Kumacheva in his pursuit of finding that reusable catalyst. What Dr. Kumacheva has done is created a method of studying gas-liquid interactions, essentially how the frustrated Lewis pairs, which is in a solution, interact with the CO2, which is a gas. Normally, this is a very difficult reaction to study, but thanks to Dr. Kumacheva's innovation, these reactions can be studied quite easily using microfluidics. Microfluidics is basically the flow of liquids through narrow channels, as thin as the thickness of the hair. So what we are doing is that we generate bubbles of CO2, or in principle we can generate bubbles of any other gas. 
and uh, these bubbles are generated in a, in a ballistic way with a very high frequency, up to kilohertz. And then these bubbles shrink due to the reaction. And based on the shrinkage of bubbles, we can say how efficient is a particular reaction. Now, the acquisition of data or the, is based on the imaging. We image these bubbles. And it can be done very fast in comparison with typical chemical analysis. Using the data provided by Dr. Kumacheva, Dr. Stefan and his research team are continually developing systems that will capture CO2 and be reactive with CO2 by creating new frustrated Lewis pairs with the most desirable catalytic properties. And once Dr. Stefan's research reaches the phase of development and implementation, we are looking at a potential endless source of energy which is completely carbon neutral. But with that date being 15 to 25 years down the road, we need to continue looking at alternative sources of energy which are renewable to help reduce CO2 emissions as well as our reliance on fossil fuels. For A Greener York brought to you by PowerStream, I'm Julia Batchelor. Thank you.